Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zan Ta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to create a custom, generic, model, face-based family. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zan Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017 in the Recent Files window. I can click New under Families and head over to Generic Model and look for generic model face based. I'll hit open and you'll notice that you're in the plan view reference level. You have a face based host object for you to give you as an anchoring point. You have two reference planes that have defined origins as chipped. So that's the insertion point. And you're physically placing that object on the face of that wall. Now, if I head over to the front elevation, you're going to notice that host object and the reference level. And so that object that you're creating is going to be sitting on top of that face right there. Uh, when you're dealing with generic model face-based, you kind of have to give yourself a little bit of perspective of orientation. Uh, and what I mean by this is that if I'm in the reference plan view and I create something of an extrusion that is elevated, say a planner, and the flower is coming up here and there's a box like this, then when you look at it in the front elevation view, it's going to be a box that's sitting basically on the ground, if you will, and you're looking at it from the side perspective view. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's go back to the reference level, and you'll, you'll understand what I mean when we physically place it in a Revit project. Let's go ahead and draw our custom planner box. And so I'll create a couple of reference planes that define the left, the right, the top, and the bottom. We'll create some dimensions that define the width or the height. We'll go ahead and specify equality conditions for the width. And we'll place a dimension from the insertion point to the bottom of the object and parameterize that. So we'll select it. We'll give it the insertion height offset, something like this. We'll select this one and parameterize it as planter width, and this one as planter height. Now let's go ahead into the family types window and make some adjustments. Let's make the insertion height offset say 6 inches. Let's make the height say 2 feet and make the width a foot. Hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and move our dimensions out of the way to make it easier to see. Also, when you're creating reference planes, ensure that they are drawn nice and clean and easy. I know I'm drawing really fast for you guys, but you kind of get the point. Make sure the intersections are showing nicely so that you can actually click against them if you have to. Um, so let's go ahead to the Create tab and use the Extrusion command. And I'll align and lock those faces accordingly. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And then I'm going to go back and create a void extrusion. And then trim the corner here. I'm going to select that angle the line, and I'm going to actually put in an angle parameter for that line to that plane. And we'll put in here and label that as a void angle parameter. We'll hit the green check mark to finish it, and you'll notice that that void is cutting that piece of geometry. Let's go ahead and look at this in 3D view so you can see what we're working with. Again, we're dealing with a host object that's acting as a face. This 3D geometry that we're building is physically touching that face and sitting inside. Now, this is a planner, so there really should be a hole in there, right? So let's go to the front elevation, and we'll zoom in here. And we'll create a void extrusion. 
So what we need is we need to create a reference plane for the thicknesses. Whoops. I'm going to do one horizontally as well. Or dimension. Like so. We'll take one of them and we'll parameterize it and call it planter thickness. We'll then go into the family types window and change that planter thickness to say one quarter inch thick. We'll hit OK. And now that that's finished, we can select the other dimensions and holding the control key down, specifying those as well. Oh, I missed one. Let's do this one. So now we have a planner thickness. So let's go ahead and create a void extrusion that cuts into that box, if you will. And align and lock those edges. We'll head over to the plan view. We'll finish it. And we can see that extrusion is going to happen there. Now, we need this extrusion to go past and lock, but we also need it to go above and inside the box. Now, how much do we go inside the box? Well, that depends on the reference plane that we draw and the dimension that we created earlier and assigning that dimension to the thickness as well. And so let's see if we can tab into that extrusion. Uh, and look at this in 3D. So now you've got a box in there. So let's look at that void extrusion. That's that one. Let's see if we can tab into that void extrusion, if we will. That's the one we want. Again, heading over to the reference view. We can zoom in and we can push and pull that to that edge and lock it. So now we're looking at it in 3D, we have our planner box. Let's take this and save this family. And we'll call it custom generic model face based one. Hit save. And now we can go ahead and create a new project and create any kind of geometry that has a face. So real simple, we'll just do a wall, look at it in 3D, and we'll use Control Tab to cycle back to the family and load it into the project. Now that it's there, it's going to want to touch a face. Since I'm in a plan view, it's going to want to place it like so. We can either place it on the vertical face, on a face, or on the work plane. So I'm going to use Place on Vertical Face and Place One. Let's head over to a 3D view. And if we say place on face, we can just place it on the face like this. If we choose on work plane, it's going to go to the current work plane, which is level one. Now, if we shade it, you can start to see what we have to work with as a custom generic model face based. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.